Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Creative Journey, and our guest speaker today is Susan Finley. She'll be talking about how to keep your vibrations high in a difficult time. And um, we don't have a camera on her today, so we'll just have to hear her speak. So go ahead, Susan. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be here. And, and today I thought I, I'd just talk, like you said, about how to keep your vibrations high. And, and the reason why I chose that topic, because I just want your audience to know about what's going on in the world right now as far as energetically. And, and the old ways of the earth are being released with higher vibrations coming in on our planet. And we're beginning to respond in deeper ways now. And 2017 is the very best year so far it's a very exciting year filled with high vibrations and energies and it may not seem like that if you look at the media and you look at the radio you, well, not the radio we look at the TV it may not seem that way to a lot of people but there are really high vibrations on the planet right now in fact the highest there's ever been on the planet earth and that's an awesome thing and we're learning more now in the 30 years from 2000 up to 2030 than we have in the last 2 billion years of our Earth's history. Wow. So, yes, more than the 2 billion years um, we've learned. And we can manifest our desires, whatever we desire, 10 times faster than we could in the year 2000. So I kind of wanted to uh, say that because it's so important in how we think and what we act and how we feel and our reactions to things right now because they're going to come back to us very quickly. So it's really, um, you know, just really important to know this and know that we need to keep our vibrations high no matter what are, what are happening or at least neutral. Um, starting in the year 2012, our planet Earth moved from a three-dimensional planet and how, were we, how I can describe that is we reacted more with ne what we interpret negative things in fear or anger or negativity and lower level vibrations before 2012. But starting in 2012, our planet actually moved up in energies and in, in a dimension. It moved up to another higher dimension, the fourth dimension, and we're heading toward the fifth. And the fourth dimension is the dimension of love. So we're bringing in all sorts of love energies are coming into our planet right now. And they're coming from the beings on this planet. Plus, they're coming from outside our planet. They're coming from the creator and ascended masters and angels and star teams and galactic teams. They're helping us out. Um, what we need to know is everything that we choose to have in our lives will come a lot quicker. Because the universe just says yes to us. They're just saying yes, yes, yes. They're the creators of their world. Whatever they think, do, and say, we're going to say yes to them and give them more of that. So we have to be really careful about how we react, we react to things, too, that are happening around us and not let it, us get uh, lower, have a lower level vibration by reacting negatively. And I don't know about you, but Julia, but when I was growing up, that's how we were taught. We were taught whenever there was something, what we interpret really bad or negative happening, we stomped our foot and got angry and got upset. And we carried that for quite a while. Did, did, were you raised like that where that's how people normally react? Um, <clears throat> um, no, not so much, but I did notice it in the world after I left home. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, in much of the world back when I was growing up, I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, and most of the people really reacted like that. Now we're awakening more to who we really are, and we don't really re need to react like that. And we're realizing if we do, we'll attract what, what we give out. So, um, so anyhow, so we sh and also another thing is we should open our minds and hearts to love in everything. We need to see love in everything, not only our own families, but other people who are not in our families, other people that may be difficult for us, animals that we've never paid attention to before. They're here to help us, actually. Um, plants, nature, 
uh, it's all a part of this whole movement right now to, to raise our vibrations. And it's the most amazing time we've ever been on earth. And everyone on the planet right now was really dying to get in here. And we were one of the, we were the lucky ones that were actually allowed to come and we were chosen. There are many souls who were not able to be here because there weren't enough bodies for them to go into. And we, we have to consider ourselves very lucky to be here to see these changes on the planet right now. So this is just an awesome time. And I, I just wanted to say that because I need people to know it's an awesome time because you can manifest what you want a lot quicker now than you could even a year ago, a lot quicker than a year ago. Good. So that's so exciting, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, and I was talking about your, how to react to things. Cause a lot of people have a lot of difficulty with this and I'm a life coach too. And I've coached many people and, um, it's just sometimes hard to get over things. So what we need to know, our thoughts create our world, our reactions, our thoughts, and then our actions and our feelings create our world for us. Our inner world creates our outer. So um, rather than mindfully creating our world um, from the outside, we create it from the inside. We have to watch out with the media coverage because that's not what's really going on right now in our whole planet. That's not what's going on. It's just a little speck of something going on and we have to, we have to kind of get around that and say, send love to whatever you feel is going on in the world that you're not agreeing with, send love to that situation situation or these people um, so paying how we react to things and this is what I say to people they say well that's not human like if you react positive to my best friend passing away or my husband dying and I said no you don't have to be positive and joyous um, what we should do is take a kind of a neutral if something really devastating happens to us we kind of have to stay in a neutral state because everything that happens to us we allowed, we, we agreed with, we said we want this because we, we wanted to come to the planet Earth for experiences that are different than in the spirit world. We knew ahead of time we were going to come into some difficult times, and all of us do. Nobody has a perfect life, nobody. Even though it may seem that way, nobody does. And so we, um, we wanted to come and we wanted to learn things from some of these difficult times. So... Um, we really have to watch our negativity when things that are difficult happen. One of the things is keeping neutral. Remember, everything that happens, we've chosen on a higher level to go through either a lesson for ourselves or a lesson for someone else that's close to us that we've agreed to be part of. It's kind of like a play that we're in. We've agreed to take a certain part in that play. And we have to realize that um, once we leave this earth, we'll be looking down and saying, oh, I shouldn't have taken it just so seriously. This wasn't really all that bad. <laughs> we, so there's some things you could do, though, when you're in that state of mind. Um, there's many things, actually, you can do to help you when you're going through something difficult and you're even having trouble reacting in a neutral way. Um, there's meditation tapes, you know, watching funny movies, taking a walk in the woods. Um, here's one that I really like. Would you like me to show that? It's just very simple. Would you like me to tell you that one? Certainly. Um, pretend that you're having a bad day. Something really happened to you and you just can't seem to shake off um, sadness or sadness or burdens or stress. So pretend that you're, it's a 95 degree day and you're wearing this really heavy coat. You're outside and it's really humid and you're wearing this really heavy coat. And this coat is full of your burdens. It's got stress, it's got anger, it's got anything that you're going through right now and it's, you're wearing that. And you just wanna get rid of it. So right now, anything that you're going through, I invite you to put on that coat and just take it off right now. Just take it off and lay it on the ground. Lay that coat on the ground that's full of your stresses and burdens and, and whatever you're going through that you're not having a good time with. Now, right in front of you appears a lake or an ocean. Remember, it's a 95 degree day and you just want to jump in that lake and you want to jump there and having fun because when you were younger, you remembered how much you love swimming and you love the water. So you just take a big jump right in there now. Jump in <laughs> and feel the water. Oh, 
gosh, we've already taken that coat off, which is full of a lot of your stresses and your anger and your anxiety. Now you see this big wave coming in back of you. It's, it's huge, but you love waves. You actually wanted to be a surfer when you were growing up, or you love to jump and play in the waves and ride your rafts down in the waves. And there it comes. And you just feel this wave is going to take out the remaining anxiety and stress and depression or whatever you're going through. And it's going to go right through your body. It's going to come and hit you in the back, but it's going to go right through your body. And when it goes through your body, it's going to pull out all the remaining negativity or stress. Are we ready? It's coming. It's coming. Okay, there it comes. It's going right through you. It's taking out all the remaining stress and anxiety and worry. And all you have is a wonderful feeling now of happiness and joy. And the sun is shining down on you. And you're just playfully enjoying this, this wonderful ocean. And you're back to feeling like you felt when you were a really young child. And you had no cares in the world. And it just feels awesome. Just keep doing it as long as you want to do it and stay there as long as you want. Simple things like this, Julia, really help people if they can visualize things like this instead of keeping to repeat things, negative things people have said to them or things that are going on in their life. Finding another path or another route to happiness and joy, or at least neutrality, is, is what we need to do right now. And things just as simple as this really help people out. Did you feel anything? Did you feel really? Yeah, that was a nice, that was, yeah, if we can remember to do that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I, I want to say something too about loving yourself, loving yourself, because if you love yourself, you're going to get what you want a lot faster if you can love yourself. And people have said to me, well, how can I do that? How do I love myself? I've made so many mistakes in my life and I've made, I've, I've blundered this and I've blundered that and I can't seem to let this go. So you're the only one holding yourself back about what you've done. I want you to know that because I've taken a lot of spiritual classes and with a, a lot of ascended masters like Jesus, Mother Mary, they all say none of them hold that against you. We're the only ones that hold it against ourselves. And we lock ourselves in kind of an internal prison, don't we sometimes? Mm -hmm. But the most important thing they say about things we've gone through are learning the lessons from these situations. Um, so what I always do is if I have done something that I keep going back to thinking, oh, I should have said something else. I, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, what I do is I turn it into a flower. I pretend in my mind I have a flower garden. And my flower garden is all the lessons I've learned in my life, and all the mistakes I've made. But I don't even look at it like that. I look at it as lessons I've learned in my life. And I turn that lesson into a beautiful flower. Now, this flower here is going to be different than all the other flowers because it's a different lesson. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. A lot of my flowers are dripping with gold. And they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And anytime I want to come back to that feeling, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I can't forgive myself. I go to the flower garden. And I go to that flower in particular. And I look at the beautiful flower and remember, I'm here for that lesson. I'm not here for mistakes, to kick myself for mistakes. I'm here for the lesson that I've learned and I've learned it. And it's in my garden and I'm so proud of the big garden that I have. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. <laughs> so people can look at these things in a different way and it really helps them to move on with where they need to be in their life and, and know how powerful they are. Everyone is very, very powerful. We just don't realize that because not a lot of people have told us that in their life, that we're so powerful. And here's what I've learned about who we really are. We are an aspect of the creator. We are really a true source of the creator's light. Um, picture the creator as the sun. We're each an individual ray of that sun. And we all have different interests, different things that we like. And that's, that's perfectly fine. And even though we're all different, we're all equal. Every single one of us, no matter what our jobs are, no matter what we've elected to do in this lifetime, we're equal. We need to know that we are co-creators with the creator. 
And we are extremely, extremely powerful. We need to claim our power back. We need to claim that back. So you are, we're all equal, we're all an extension of this creator. So know who you are. Know the power that you have. Don't use it against people. You don't use that power against people. You use it to have a happy life and use it to help others and use it to manifest what you want. But forgiveness and loving yourself are the biggies, I think, that a lot of people need to learn. So I thought at the end of the show, I, I could do a little heart wall release. And what that is, it's kind of a, um, it's a, a little wall. It's an etheric wall. You can't see it that people put around their heart to protect them from the hurts they've gone through in this lifetime. And um, saying Wonderful things about yourself is another really awesome way to start loving yourself. It's a start, and it's a very good start because um, if you say these affirmations, they call them out loud, and that gives them more power. And if the more you say them, that even gives them more power still. And if you say them for 30 days in a row or more, your subconscious will actually start believing them. Um, maybe when you were younger and you were a child, your mom or dad said, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. Or a teacher might have said that or a friend or brother or sister. And it stuck with us and we feel that's true. And actually it's not true at all. They're just coming from an unloving space. We just have to know that for them to say that they weren't in their highest space either. So we need to remember who we are. We're a child of God. We're a spark of the divine. And we need to start getting back who we really are by telling ourselves who we really are. And saying that, I would say at least, you know, two to three times a day, we should say these affirmations for 30 days in a row. And that'll help our subconscious um, remember who we really are. And it will, it will take out, it will cancel out all the negative things we keep saying about ourselves that we've been told and maybe we started telling ourselves after that. So I thought we could maybe do that at the end, if that's okay with you, Julia. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. And, and here's what I see a lot of people need to start doing now. And, and I'm including myself in all these things too, because they say the best teachers learn all this themselves first and they move on to teach other people. But follow your passions because passions and excitement are your soul's desires. They are your soul's desires. They are what your soul wants you to do when you're here on earth. And a lot of people put them in the back burner. And I understand that because they have jobs, children, some of them my age now are taking care of their own parents. They have housework. They have so many obligations and duties. They forget what their passions are. They even forget who they were when they were younger without a lot of these duties and obligations. And so we have to sometimes go back to when we were a child or a teenager or at a place that we felt truly happy and that all things could, could happen for us. We need to think back to those times when we felt that way. We need to put ourselves in those places again. And even though your life is filled up with a lot of things, sometimes we need to remove things in our life that are holding us back from our passions. We need to, to take away some of those yes, 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 as we say to people every time they ask us to do something and we resent it. Um, those are the things we need to let go. When we resent anything someone asks us to do, and we may think we're doing a good deed, we may think that we're pleasing others, but actually if you resent something and it keeps you from your passions, it's not the best thing for you to do. Someone else will step in and do it. You may not think they will, but they will. And maybe that would be their passion. But things we resent, things we hold against other people, we need to let those go. And I know a lot of people in my day and age were told to be good little girls and good little boys. And you're good if you do everything everyone asks for you. And now we're learning that's not true. We should do what we want to do first, our passions first. Because the greatest gift we can give others is not how we're helping them all that that's a wonderful loving thing but it's showing others how we can be happy in our lives how our lives are working and we're happy with our lives that's the greatest gift we can show people it's not that we're doing so much for other people it's that they're looking at us as a role model on how our life works so that they they feel their life can work the same way 
So that's the greatest gift we can give to somebody, your life working and your happiness. So think of things that you can let go. I remember I used to, I, I still do. I always had a date night, even though I had two children growing up and I had a full-time job. I always made sure I had a date night every weekend with my husband to get away and rekindle who we were together. Um, just leaving time for friends, leaving time for fun is really, really important now because that can change our lives around. Yeah, even if we always have life. chores every weekend. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you have chores, but set time as aside for something that you love, even if it's just sitting, going to get a cappuccino or something after work, or even just sitting outside for a half hour after you've done your chores or walking in the woods in, in the weekends. It's really going to help you raise your vibration and not think life is so hard. It's going to help you have a different outlook on your life. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we don't spend enough time out in nature either. I agree with you. I agree. In all the, in just, just sitting outside and taking your shoes off in the grass really helps you connect with the ground, which is a higher level energy. If you can take your shoes off and sit with your feet in the grass, that really helps you. Um, you know, any, any time you can get outside is, is really awesome. And it kind of takes your mind off things that have been worrying you or concerning you. But another one I have is living in the moment. And I know a lot of people have heard this before, but they really do need to practice doing it because it's good for me to say all these things and people say, oh, that's good information, but you actually really need to do it. Mm -hmm. action, yeah. Taking action, doing it is the most important thing. You can know a lot of things, but actually starting to actually really do it will change your life. I mean, you can read a ton of books. You can read a ton of spiritual and metaphysical books and say, I agree with that. I agree with that. But if you don't actually try it and do it, it's not going to really make much of a difference in your life. You actually have to set time aside to really do these things. Um, but I wanted to talk about living in the moment and appreciating every moment that you're here. Because a lot of people say, I'll be happy when... I'll be happy when I get my degree and start my new job. I'll be happy when my kids are old enough that I won't have them as babies and have so much work. I'll be happy when my mom and dad are, are doing better. I'll be happy when, when actually we should be happy in the now moment or at least neutral in the now moment. Try to do some of these exercises like jumping in the water to remain more neutral in the now moment. And how we perceive these moments is going to be determine our level of happiness and set us up for the future moments, too. Um, don't let fear creep in like, oh, well, what would happen in the future if I did this? What if I quit my job and I'll never get a job again? What if I, what will happen if this? So um, I, I used to tell this story because I've gone to several weddings and I was lucky enough to be able to talk to the bride mostly. And and remind her that if you focus on the moment, that'll make that day last longer or your vacations last longer. And, and just keep saying to yourself, if you're a bride or groom or if you're in a wedding of your children or you're in a wedding, say, this is my wedding day. Say it several times during your wedding day. This is my wedding day. This is my vacation. What, this is my graduation. And say it several times and focus on little things on the tables that you're eating at, your cup even, and how it's made, or what the design in it, or the color of the flowers around you, that will really make those great times last longer. And you'll be able to remember those days longer if you say things like that. This is my wedding day. This is my wedding day. This is my graduation day. This is my, and then look at teeny little things that will make that last longer. It'll make the day last longer, and you'll be able to recall it a lot better. So just little, little things like this can really help your life. Even little tweaks in your life can really, really help out too. Wow. Do you have any questions so far, Julia? Well, that sounds real simple. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is really, really simple. It's just a little change in how you do things and how you think and how you act. Um, do we have time for a couple of the common pitfalls to avoid so we can manifest what we want? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, because 
what we, what you think, do, and say is on a certain vibration that attracts that back to you. So it's kind of like a radio station. Like you turn into that certain radio station, like 102.1, and you get that station that you want. Well, you're like a radio station. Like you are, whatever, whatever level you are, what you're thinking, doing, and saying is like a radio station attracting similar things back to you. So um, you have to remember that. So you want to stay in at least a neutral vibration when some things happen to you that you're not really happy about. Stay in that neutral vibration knowing that it's all for a, a, a higher reason. Everything is always for a higher reason. You're going to learn things from these higher reasons. They're called soul lessons. You're going to learn things from these soul lessons. They're going to bring you to a better place in the long run. I mean, how many times have we gone through something that we weren't happy about going through, but like years later, you look back on it and say, wow, I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't gone through that. Yeah. I wouldn't be here today thinking like I am. I wouldn't be the same person. And it's for a good thing. It's a good thing. Have you ever said that to yourself? Yes. Or, or I've yeah. said, I wish I'd have been thinking this way the whole time. Yes. Yes. But that's okay. Because that's our, like my, my, <laughs> my garden of flowers, where I'm going to forgive myself for not doing that, because maybe I wasn't ready, that timing wasn't perfect for me to be there yet. But now we're all starting to learn from each other, and learn that this is how we can react to things. But some common pitfalls, and, and what I've been teaching and tutoring and teaching and helping people in my coaching is make sure you don't allow others to block your happiness. Some of us are really paying too much attention to other people around us and listening to what they say. And it could be a mother or a father or a husband or wife or children. And we're paying too much attention to their advice. And what we need to do is, remember, follow your passions and excitement regardless of what anyone else says to you about what you want to do in your life. That's your soul calling and nobody else knows your soul like you do. And sometimes we don't even know. We're just following our passions because our soul really is telling us this is what you need to do. It might be completely the opposite of what your mom or dad or your husband or wife do. But that is what you need to do because you don't want others to tell you what makes them happy because it may not make you happy. Don't allow others to make you sad or angry either. Don't allow them to do that. Put divine white light around you. Just say, I'm calling on divine white light around me to keep all negative thoughts out and to keep myself pure. Say something like that, and they'll just bounce right off of you. Don't let people do that to you. I see too many people, even I hear them in stores talking, oh, she did this, she did that. It was horrible. But really, that's that person in that vibration, and you don't want to even go there. You want to be in a higher vibration because you're attracting what you think, do, and say, even if it's talking about what someone else has done wrong, you don't want to even go there because that puts you in that lower vibration and you're going to attract things from a lower vibration, even just talking about what other people have done that you think is not right. Okay. And, and don't allow yourself to block your happiness with your limiting beliefs. Um, so many people make judgments about themselves too here's an example. They might say, I'll be happily married only if my husband tells me he loves me once a day or my wife tells me that she loves me once a day. But they set up these limiting belief systems for their, their selves and limit their happiness. Don't pay attention to what if you're doing that at all. Say, am I limiting myself in any way by making any statements that I don't need to make anymore? These things are all old ways of being, you know, beings really limiting of myself so watch what you're doing and what you're saying and what you're thinking about yourself or others i'll only like them if they do this i'll only be their friend if they're like this because you could be limiting yourself to your friendships and you might really have a lot of fun with a lot of people who are very different than you so don't limit yourself with limiting beliefs or limit others with your limiting beliefs just and how you figure them out is you they pop up in your mind and you'll catch yourself thinking them and you wonder wow why did I think that 
Because now with these higher energies coming in, we're becoming more aware that we are doing some of these things and we're releasing them. We're releasing these lower level things that we've always thought in our life. And now we're saying, hey, I'm not thinking that anymore. I don't agree with that anymore. Because a lot of higher vibrations are coming in that allow us to realize and examine how we've been thinking before. And we're releasing these. We're releasing them now, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. And one more thing I want to say is be in congruence to what you want. Because many people are very good now about attracting things into their life, or at least I should say writing affirmations about this. And an affirmation is something that starts with I am, and then whatever you want, we put it in the present tense because you want it to be in the present. You don't want it to be in the future. You want it to be in the present. So, um, you always start out with, I am aligning myself with, and whatever you want, I'm aligning myself with perfect health. And that's awesome to say that every day, at least three times a day, if you have any problems with your health. I'm aligning myself with financial freedom, doing the things I love through the avenues I love. I'm aligning myself to whatever you want. You could say that. I'm aligning myself. Always put it in the, in the present. Many people now on all these shows that I've been in uh, know how to do this. But here's one of the pitfalls that I found is you have to be in congruence with your actions to match whatever you're saying you want. In other words, here's an example. If you say, I'm aligning myself to the perfect soulmate, and you have a little bit more information that you really need that's necessary for your happiness to have that soulmate, but then you start dating people that you realize are not going to treat you right. You, you know they have a, a history of not really treating people right. And you start going out with them, even though you're saying these wonderful affirmations, the universe or God or the creator or the divine team is very confused about what you want so you're not going to get that perfect soulmate as quick as you you would if you would align yourself with people who are nice to you who are similar to what in the same energetics is what you want so you have to watch this your actions have to match what you want they say if you want to be a doctor hang out around the doctor's offices if you want to be a um, you know, whatever you want to be, hang around those people. It puts you more in that energy. You say you want to lose weight. I want to lose 20 pounds by the end of the summer, but then you go to McDonald's and eat three cheeseburgers a week. So what I'm saying is your actions have to match your, your intentions. They have to match it or else they'll actually cancel it out. Okay. But, but the good thing is, if 55% of your energies go towards something, you're going to get it. If 55% of your energies go towards something, you're going to get it. It's the law of the universe. So in other words, if you say your affirmations and you start really believing them and you do have some doubts about it, I have some doubts that I'm going to lose this weight. I have some doubts that I'm going to find that perfect soulmate. But if you say those affirmations enough and 55% of all of your energies go toward really believing it, you will manifest it. That is a law of the universe. And, and especially if it's for your greatest and highest good. And how do you know? Because your excitement and passion are tied in with it. You're, you're excited about it. You're, you're actually, you're, you're calling on soul qualities. Your excitement is a soul quality. Happiness is a soul quality enjoyment of your life is a soul quality love um laughter is a soul quality that you're that you're it's a good thing to have freedom in your job is is a soul quality it's a wonderful thing to have in a job you can ask for that um you know adventure is a soul quality bliss courage all of these are things that are wonderful qualities that that are good for your soul and your soul recognizes that these things you ask for will give you those things but be incongruent with your with your actions so that you can get them you can get them you want to get them that way great so do you have any questions julia um no it sounds reason it sounds sensible <laughs> yes yes Yes, because it's all about energies. It's all about energies. And it's very simple once you know how to do this. And just it's a retraining of a, a lot of people's just retraining them to learn how to do it a little bit better than what they were 
you know, taught when they were younger. Right. But, but um, I, the number one reason people do not get what they want is because they don't feel they deserve it. They feel other people deserve it. Like my neighbor deserves it, but I don't, you know, he deserves it, but I don't. And that's, and it's not who you are. We need to take our power back and know that we do deserve this just as well as anyone else. So saying affirmations and um, I have a heart wall release if you want to do that. Okay. Sample affirmations to end would be awesome if you want to do that. Okay. So I'm sorry. I tried to figure out how to turn this clock off (laughs) because it chimes on the hour for quite a while. (laughs) Hmm. I like the chime of it. It's, it's really pretty. It's actually kind of soothing. Yes, it's very pretty and soothing. I, I think so too. Okay, I think we can do it now. Okay, so if you, if you want to, and, and anything in the metaphysical field that you don't feel comfortable with doing, you can just say no to yourself, and that blocks it from happening. Or, or you could say, yes, I'm inviting this. Yes, I'm open to it, and it'll come to you. But this is, I got this from someone. I'm trying to think who I got it from. But as a life coach, I've learned, I've taken a lot of classes and learned a lot of things, but I did get this from someone, and I really love it, and I say this a lot for my myself too. And, um, and then the affirmations I'm going to say after that are just things that I feel we should be saying about ourselves daily. So we can love ourselves more because that's the number one reason why people do not get what they want is they don't feel they deserve it. They don't feel they're loving enough or, or whatever enough. And I think we should be saying these two to three times a day, every day about ourselves so we can get back our power of who we really are and who we really are. We're really divine love. That's who we are. We just need to get that back again. So, okay. So are you ready? Mm-hmm. And on the affirmations, um, I don't know how you want to do, but if you want to repeat after me and, and, and any of the guests who then are, will join us now or later can say them out loud after me too. That would be a really nice thing to do. So, okay. okay. We're going to do the releasing of heart walls and barriers for self-love. It's a form of a prayer. Divine light and love, I request that you please release and dissolve all heart walls and barriers that we have built to protect our hearts from all emotional hurt and pain now. I ask divine light and divine love to dissolve and release all heart walls we have built to prevent us from totally and unconditionally loving ourselves just the way we are. These barriers around our hearts are preventing us from loving ourselves and loving others. Please release and dissolve our feeling unloved, unwanted, rejected, undeserving of love, and unlovable. I also ask to release all fears, anger, worry, and all lower level emotions associated with us not loving ourselves. I ask divine light and divine love to totally dissolve and release all heart walls and barriers now. Please fill all space created with divine love and divine light divine joy and happiness, and divine harmonious relationships. I ask for this or something better, according to the divine law of grace. I pray that this is so, and so it shall be. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to say this, the affirmations for self-love. Okay. And if you want to repeat them, that would be great. And, our, and maybe our guests would want to repeat them or say them to themselves however they choose. I am living with vitality, perfect health, and joyous energy. I uh, am whoops. living. Sorry, I thought I was supposed to repeat it. Oh, yes. I'm just going to say it with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am living. I'm living with, with vitality. Vitality. Perfect health. Perfect health. And joyous energy. And joyous energy. I am aligning myself 100% with my highest potential. I I am aligning myself 100% with my highest highest potential. potential. I am the empowered creator of my life. I am the empowered creator of my life. I am aligning with divine love, light, and joy. 
I am aligning with divine love, light, and joy. I choose to release all drama and negativity in my life. I choose to release all drama and negativity in my life. I choose to stay out of judgment of myself and others. I choose to stay out of judgment of myself and others. I love myself just the way I am. I love myself just the way I am. I love all of me. I, I love all of me. All of me. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve to be loved just the way I am. I deserve to be loved just the way I am. I am my best friend and soulmate. I am my best friend and soulmate. I choose to fill me with self-love now and forever. I choose to fill myself with self-love now self -love. and forever. I missed that one up. <laughs> okay. I choose to fill I me with self-love. Fill me with self-love now, now and forever. And forever. I am wonderful. I am wonderful. I am open and receptive to all good things in life. I am open and receptive to all good things in life. I am total pure love. I am total pure love. So those are some examples of what we should be saying to ourselves every day. Yeah. We should write them down. So <laughs> yes. And what I do sometimes when I see a class, I, I, I write them down. I play it over again and I write them all down. And I've gotten so many of them from classes that I've written different things down from classes and wrote them on a piece of paper and typed them up. And I say them every morning or every night. And it's really an awesome thing for us to do. It's really the most important thing because if you can love yourself you can, and open to love for yourself, you can love others more. And you'll be mm. much happier. Right. Well, thank you so much for being uh, with us and being a oh, guest. You're speaker. welcome. I loved it. Thank you for asking me. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. <laughs>